Good morning. I'm going to read to you today a little longer passage uh, from Matthew chapter 13, verse 37 through 43. Jesus told a parable that his disciples didn't really understand about the wheat and the weeds in the field. And so Jesus explained. Jesus replied, the son of man is the farmer who plants the good seed. The field is the world, and the good seed represents people of the kingdom. The weeds are people who belong to the evil one. The enemy who planted the weeds among the wheat is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the harvesters are the angels. Jesus, or just as the weeds are sorted out and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the world. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will remove from his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. And the angels will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in their Father's kingdom. Now, I think uh, most of us are not naive enough to believe that everyone who comes to church is a true believer in Christ. At Newbridge, well, like at most churches, there are many more people that are members than who actually attend, than the number who attend. I mean, that's pre-COVID. I mean, now it's all different with the COVID and the lockdowns and who comes and who doesn't, who feels safe, who doesn't. But, you know, pre-COVID, even then, there were a lot more members in most every church than those who attend. And though there are some people with very legitimate reasons for no longer being able to attend, many don't attend because they're not true believers. Even among those that attend, there are probably some that are unbelievers. You know, different researchers, different church leaders, um, like Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, Barna Research Group, and others, have made guesses about what percentage of those in church, all churches, may be unbelievers. And those numbers range anywhere from 60% to 85% some of those organizations say that they're unbelievers. You know, even the low percentage is a really troubling number. And it begs the question, what, what should we do? What, what am I supposed to do as a church leader? What are we supposed to do as committed followers of Christ if that many who are attached to a church, either through membership or some through attending, aren't believers? What are, what are we supposed to do? Well, the answer is right in front of us. Jesus said, leave them right there. Don't try to weed them out or else you'll pull up some of the good grain too. Keep sharing the gospel. And some may even become Christ followers. Our role is to sow the seed for the kingdom. He will take care of sifting the wheat from the chaff. I don't have to. Pray with me. Lord, it is concerning, but It's also hopeful because your gospel is powerful. Your word is able to penetrate to the deepest part of a person's soul and spirit. And so, Lord, I'm glad that there are people in the hearing of your word week after week whose lives and still be transformed by the life-changing power of the gospel. Lord, help us to avoid the temptation of trying
trying to purge unbelievers from believers in the church. First of all, Lord, I don't have that kind of discernment. I can't see into the heart and soul like you can. Secondly, you told us not to. You said that is not your job. Your job is to prepare for the harvest. Your job is to sow the seed. My job is to, to make sure that the gospel is heard. Your job, Lord, will be to sift between the wheat and the chaff, not mine. You said, Lord, I pray that you'd help us to be faithful in our task, sharing the word, sowing the seed, trying to lead others to faith in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I pray that you have a good day today. See you tomorrow.